Let me show you an example. This is a chemistry paper of grade 9 given by a high school board in year 2006. The exam paper is continued on the next slide. This is rest of the paper. Now look at the types of questions. Define radical. What is the effect of electric field? Define modern periodic law. Define double and triple covalent bond. Explain gases. Define solutions. What is the degree of ionization and so forth. Now if we compare these questions from the Bloom's taxonomy, we find out that 85% of the questions are from level 1, that is knowledge or information level, and 15% questions are from level 2. Only two questions as shown on the red slip. This is another textbook in one of the medical colleges from third year cross pathology. And this is the exam paper from the same textbook. Look at the types of questions which I have shown here with the yellow highlight. Let me read the questions. Name the parasites, briefly describe the pathogens, enumerate organisms, define type 3 hypersensitivity, enumerate clinical disorders and so forth. One question can be said to be of level 2, that is, how can you diagnose meningitis? This basically means 90% of the questions are from level 1 and 10% questions are from level 2. This is another paper of bachelor's degree program in one university. The name of the subject is Applied Psychology, while 100% of the questions are from level 1, that is, explain this, describe this, define this, write this, etc. And this basically means 100% of the questions of a subject called Applied Psychology is given on basically level 1. Another example of a paper from bachelor's degree program. This subject is geography. In this paper, 90% of the questions are from level 1, while 10% of the questions are from level 2. All these papers are showing something wrong or not aligned with the learning outcomes. When I checked the learning outcomes as defined in their curriculum, of most of these subjects, I found that sometimes they are described in very nice words in the curriculum where it looks like the learning outcome is of level 3 or 4 or even 5. But the exam paper, the way they are de uh, described, the, the way they are given, actually nullify, hold the learning outcome, the objective of this course. In most of the documents I found, they say the student will be able to understand or analyze the topic. So there is a serious issue in many countries and in many universities and even in schools with the quality of the exams. The learning outcomes are either not defined or if defined, the exam papers are not aligned with the learning outcomes and there is no check to it. This is usually not detected because there is ineffective quality assurance processes or activities to check whether the exam papers measure the level of blooms what they are supposed to measure. I will discuss this alignment in the subsequent section in detail when I cover quality assurance of learning outcomes in the coming sections. Quality assurance is all about measuring and controlling the results against the target level. 
Suppose there were five questions designed from level one, while three from level two and two from level three in any exam. Then perhaps we also have to analyze how much of the level one attempts by the students were correct. Similarly, how many students could answer question number two or level from or questions from level two? And how many could answer questions from level three? In this way, we could also find out, for example, in the exam in the slide given, that 40% failed in questions from knowledge level, from comprehension level 70% failed and application level questions 80% failed. Now you can imagine with this analysis we can identify that there were some problem in, in teaching at the application level in the classroom. Mm -hmm.